Hello and welcome to this 16th session on DaVinci Resolve and this is the third session on color grading and in this session we are now going to explore doing color collection for our next clip which is a clock clip and here we are going to explore curves. In the previous session we worked on color wheels and in this session we are going to work on the curves. So, to begin with see that DaVinci Resolve is launched and launch your previous project color page video part 1 double click to launch this project and this project will automatically open in the color palette. In the previous lesson using these color wheels we had successfully graded our first clip ok and here if you want to I want to show you one thing here if you want to disable any one of the node here I press control D and again control D to enable it and if I want to disable all the nodes and see what was the original clip I will press shift plus D remember shift plus D is to actually disable all the palettes of this color control and control D is to disable only one node. So, if I press shift D now if I press shift D you can now see all the three palettes are disabled and this was our original picture before color grading and if I again press shift D this is the final one in this way you can compare this. Now, the next clip is I will come to the second clip you have this pressure gauge. So, we are going to now do the color grading for this pressure gauge and in this case we are going to use a different approach. In the previous session we worked on color wheels and in this session we are going to make use of curves. So, you have these curves and we are going to make use of this curve. What is this curve? What does this curve represent? To make you understand better see for example, this panel if you press on this outgoing 4 arrows here if I click on this and click expand this will open as a separate palette. See I can open this as a separate palette I can resize it say so, I can adjust the size and resize it and place it anywhere I want ok. So, I can place it like this. Now, here uh, the thing that I want to show you is you are just seeing a line running from the bottom left corner to the top right corner and here you see some curves and in the even in this case you can either control the curve of all the four channels see y or g b or I can click on this unlink and I can control only the luminance channel or the red channel or the green channel or the blue channel and I will again enable this. Now, what this curve is going to represent is see the bottom left area of your curve represents the darkest area in your screen. Say for example, the area where the image is very dark is represented by this point whereas, the brightest area of your screen is represented here. So, if we take it on a scale of 1 to 100 this represents 0 you have this uh, control over here you can see this this you can consider it to be 0 and this I can consider it as 100. So, now to make you better understand this I am briefly going to explain about how this color structure is going to work. So, for this I am going to take the example of 
Photoshop. So, if you have Photoshop in your machine, you launch Photoshop or else you have nothing to do with Photoshop as of now. I am just showing it to just make you explain. If you does not have Photoshop, do not worry, do not launch it. You need not launch it. What I want you to learn here is in Photoshop, say for example, I open some image like this. So, I will double click and open some image like this and here just like in the video even here your picture is divided into thousands of small pixels. Say for example, if I select this zoom tool and if I zoom it maximum, I will press middle mouse and pan it okay, or I will press space bar and pan it and you can see here every area of your picture is represented by one square dot which we call as pixel and every pixel has a different color value. Say for example, I will come here and choose uh, the color picker here. I will click on this color and I will show you. See, I have enabled this foreground color and if I click on this, this is the color of this pixel and you can see all these values are represented by three values red, green and blue and here you can see the red, green and blue what are their values. You have red 201, green 235 and blue 255 and if I click here the value changes and if all the red, green, blue are made 255 because this is a 8 bit image the value changes from 0 to 255, it is white. So, if all these three values are 255, it is white and if all these values are 0, then it is black. So, if you come back to DaVinci Resolve now, this represents the 0 value and this represents the 255 value in your scene. To give you an example, when you are seeing this curve, the curve is and this moves from left to right. Okay. So, what happens is the points here are to the peak because in this area you are seeing this window and because of this window, the values are maximum here and in all other parts, the value is very less. Okay. Now, you have the white point here, you have the dark point here and now see if I move the dark point from here and move it to the top, you can see all the values which represent 0 in your image, its value is going to rise to 1, 2, 3, 4 like this and if I bring it here, when the value of 0 also becomes 255, the entire screen becomes fully white and as I decrease the value, you can see this represents the 0. This is the actual value of the image and if I increase it, the shadow areas of your image is going to increase. Similarly, if I move it to the right here, you can see this value is going to now decrease. That is, the 0 representing the darkest values of your image are now going to turn still darker and if I move it all the way to the right, it becomes pitch black. So, this represents the dark area, this is similar to the lift in your color wheel. This represents the dark areas of the image, moving it vertically increases the brightness of this dark area, moving it horizontally decreases its value. Okay. Now, you have another point here and this represents the brightest area of your screen and this if I move it to left. Now, what happens is 
these bright areas are going to turn still brighter and the image gets overexposed and if I bring it all the way here it becomes white see it is appearing white. Now, if I move it like this see the image gets overexposed because this is going to increase the value of all the white area. So, in the brightest area the maximum value available is 255. So, some areas here is completely 255, but there are some areas which might be 100, 120, 130, this area might be uh, still less. So, all those areas also becomes brighter. Okay. So, moving it left or horizontal is going to increase the brightness, but if I move it vertically down you can see it will decrease the brightness and if I bring it down it becomes pitch black. Okay. So, you have one point here and one point here this represents the shadow areas this represents the highlight or the bright areas. However, between these two points you have a line and on this line you can add as many points as possible say for example, I just click here this added a new point and now what I can do is I can change the value here and make it brighter see and I can also add a point here and I can make this move down and darker. I can add one more point here and I can move it like this see I can move it like this. So, in this way I can change the shape of the curve to change the intensity of pixels in my image and now if I right click on this it gets deleted see as I right click on this it gets deleted. So, this is how the curve works as of now all the four curves are linked and whatever I am doing is affecting all the channels. And second thing here I want you to observe is if you come over to this scope area I will also pop up this scope area and I will move it uh, say for example, somewhere to the left like this. Okay, I will slightly move it like this and now uh, if I control this you see the way this is going to work. See when I move this you can see the white areas are moving to the top in the graph you can see that and if I move here you can see the dark areas moving down and this curve by clicking in between I can change the way the curve is operating. So, this has made the white areas more bright and here. So, I can see how the curve is changing and also the image is changing. See now, if I move it you can see more details in the window. Okay. So, the window details have become sharper by using this kind of S curve. So, right now I will right click and delete all this nodes. So, for this this is how the waveform is going to change when I am going to make use of this curve. So, now uh, to me I will just close this gallery so that I get more room I will place my uh, waveform here and my curve here okay, so that you can see it correctly. Now, I want to show you one thing is to now you can clearly see how the waveform works. Now, if you see the image on the left hand side you have this window which is the brightest area and that is the reason why the graph is moving or you have the maximum value here and then overall the image is dark this area represents this dark area, but as you move to the right end you can see a gradual change from dark to white and that is what this curve is representing. Okay. 
Now, you can see here now what is happening is some of the dark area is getting uh, uh, one second. Uh, I will keep it little to the down. It is at this 128 level. And if I drag this, you can see the dark areas coming down. And I does not want this to go below 0. I want it to be placed somewhere between 0 and 128 like this. Okay. So, I am going to place the curve somewhere here. And for the peak area, if I drag to the this top area horizontally, you can see the maximum value is increasing and it is increasing in this white area. And as I drag it, if I make it too bright, it should not go beyond 1023. Then all the details here will be lost. So, instead of this second line in the graph, I move it slightly to a point over here. So, I have adjusted the black here and the white here. So, instead of adjusting lift and gain, we are adjusting this in the curve using the bottom left point and the top right point. So, this seems to be somewhat better now. Okay, now, to continue with the color grading, now one thing is as I move this little to the closer, you can see the black area has slightly moved to the top. I will slightly move it to the left and pull it a little down because it is iterative. If I change the bright area, then the dark area also slightly moves up. Okay. So, this is like con using gain and making the changes and this is like using lift and making the changes and apart from these two points, somewhere in the middle, I am going to add one more point like this and if I make changes to this, this is like making changes to the gamma wheel. So, here if I drag it and increase it, you can see the mid tones are becoming brighter. And if I move it back, the mid tones are becoming darker. So, what I am now going to do is I will slightly increase it and also you can see the histogram. This histogram is similar to this map, but the only difference is this is moving the intensity from left to right and here you can see the gray area. So, instead of here, if I move it slightly and bring it somewhere. Uh, over here at this point, I am going to slightly make this curve move like this. So, this appears to be fine, but only thing is now to make the color balancing. Last time we did the color balancing using the color picker, we right clicked and enabled show picker RGB value and using this RGB value we did the uh, color balance, but this time instead of that, I will come to waveform, click on this setting and I will enable RGB and I will also enable colorize. Okay. Why? And I will enable colorize and I will switch to the uh, RGB mode. So, when I and I will enable R, G and B all the three. So, once I have enabled and once I have enabled colorize, now, if I click uh, outside here, this palette will be closed. Now, here you can now see that this palette here you can see the red is slightly above the blue and green. You can see the curve here. Okay. Now, in this case, I want to reduce the red color. One thing you have to remember when you are doing this color grading is you have to understand the context of your image. Say for example, the shot of your video is a forest and when you are using the forest automatically naturally in your graph green level will be more. You need not balance it because you have more green. Similarly, if you are focusing on a blue sky the blue will be more and you need not neutralize it or correct it because in the natural context itself the blue is more. So, when you are doing this reference use 
white area as the reference. Say for example, here if I come, the dial background here of this pressure gauge is white. So, if I come over here, I can easily see that in this white area, I am having blue 71, green 84 and red 97. So, red is more. So, what I have to now do now? I have to reduce the red level. So, for this I will come back to the curve and this time I will disable this, I will unlink it and I will select only the red channel and I will select this point and slightly pull it down and as I pull down, you can see the red coming down in the graph. See, you pull it down do not pull it too much, slightly move it down and you can see that red tint has been removed. If required, move it and slightly adjust it like this. Okay. So, now you can see that red tint has been removed. Now, similar to that, there is some amount of blue fringe at the end somewhere here. So, for this I will enable the blue channel now and I am going to move blue slightly to the top and as I move it you can see it is shifting. I will slightly move it and so that now this image is more neutralized. Now, I have color balanced it. To understand how this has been done or whether it is correct or not, I can press shift plus D. This was your original image. Again shift D this is your color corrected image. So, we have and now you can also see the value 101, 98, 101 in the white area the three values are almost matching. So, if it is matching like this, this means that you take the reference of any white area and if the values are matching, it means that it has been correctly balanced. So, this is the corrective grading that we have applied but this time we have done it using the curves. Now, to apply the creative grading, now only thing I want here is I want this image to be more contrast, I want to make it more contrast. So, right now here I will close the scopes window and here in the curves, if I try to make this contrast adjustment also in this graph then what happens is this is already the effect is applied and it is very difficult to differentiate between what is corrective uh, balance and what is your creative balance. So, for this reason after we have done it I will close this curve, I will come to the node editor, I will right click and I am going to add node label and I am going to call this as uh, corrective because we have done the correction here. Okay. So, see I will node here and I will type corrective. Okay. So, I have typed corrective here. So, if I select press control D and check this is the original image and control D this is the final image. Now, I want this image to be more contrast for this I am now going to add right click add node, I am going to add a serial node. Remember the keyboard for uh, shortcut for this is alt plus s. So, when you press alt plus s you have a new node and here you can automatically see that this curve is again straight. Here you can see the adjustment you have done and here you can see this is strike and I will enable link in this to link it back and even in this case uh, I will link it back okay. and I select this and you can see that this is a straight line now. and I can apply the corrective contrast node for this and for this again I am going to uh, pop up this window and keep it uh, uh, slightly down here. Okay, I will move it to the beginning of this clip, I will keep it here and scope also I will zoom it and I will slightly keep it here and so, so that we can work on both together like this. Okay. So, now the next thing I will move scope little to the top like this and curve, I will bring it up 
like this ok. So, the next thing I want is I want to now apply the contrast ok. Now, here the best way of adding contrast to your image is by creating an S curve. What does S curve means is we are going to add two points on the curve one at the lower middle tones and one at the higher mid tones and then we are going to drag this lower middle town mid town slightly to down so that it becomes darker like this and we are going to increase this slightly up like this uh, slightly I will move it down and slightly I move it like this. So, I will uh, make a subtle adjustment like this and even here uh, slightly I am going to make the change. So, this is going to make my image more contrast see slightly contrast like this. So, I am going to adjust it. So, you can this is what we call as an S node and I have made the adjustment, but only thing now is after applying this contrastness I also want to make some color correction here. I am not going to do the color correction right inside this because it again uh, merges or mixes my contrast with color correction. So, for that I am again going to close this and this scope node I will come to nodes and this time I want my color correction to be applied before I apply the contrast. So, to make this I am now going to come here right click and choose add node and this time I choose add serial before and when I choose add serial before a node will be added after before this I will come back to my node 3 I will choose node label and I am going to call this contrast and I have added a new node here and this node is now between this corrective and contrast node. So, if I right click choose add node and choose add serial before a node will be added before the current node. Now, coming back here remember the keyboard shortcut to add a node before the previous node is shift plus s. To add a node serial node after the current node it is alt plus s to add it before the current node it is shift plus s. So, now I am going to select this newly added middle node and I am going to add a node label and I am going to call this node label as look and after this in this right now you can see the curve is straight here and one thing is now before we start adding nodes I am going to remove this unlink and I am going to select the color channels one by one. If I select the red channel see I will click somewhere here and if I increase the value you can see the red is getting added into my scene. I will reset it I will pop up this window and I will bring it over here to show it to you. Now, see as I drag the red is going to increase, but when I move it down and reduce red when red is reduced automatically the opposite color of red which is cyan is introduced into the scene. See cyan and red are opposite colors. So, that is why if you increase red cyan goes away and if you decrease red cyan gets added ok. I will reset it similarly if you take green if I increase green the image turns greenish, but if I decrease green you can see the image is turning magenta see it is turning magenta. So, if I increase it is green the opposite color of green is magenta ok. So, 
I will just stop this reset it and similarly in blue if I increase it it becomes bluish, but if I decrease it you can see it turns yellow. So, blue and yellow are opposite colors. So, I will again reset it. If you want to know this opposite colors correctly come to this color wheel and you can see here yellow is here and just opposite color is blue. Okay. Red is here just opposite color is cyan and green is here the just opposite color is magenta. Okay. So, understand this basic before we start our color grading. Okay, now, here in this case uh, normally when we do this color grading creative color grading we use a process called as cross process. Cross process is a process where in the lower mid tones we are going to increase a particular color and in the upper middle tones we are going to decrease its opposite color or if we decrease the color in lower middle tone its opposite color will be increased in the upper middle tone. To show you an example if you come here I will come to the red channel here and what I will do is at the point over here in the lower middle tones I am slightly going to introduce this red color okay, and then come to the upper middle tones here and drag it down and decrease it and this is going to create some kind of a retro effect you can see this. Okay. Now, I will reset it same thing I will do it with the blue color. Okay. So, here I will slightly introduce bluish I will make it bluish and in the mid tones I am going to add the yellow. Okay. So, this is uh, I will slightly move it down slight variation I am going to bring it so that there is a very subtle variation. Okay. So, I will add a very very little subtle variation like this. Okay. So, this is I think a yeah, little yellow over here at this point. Okay. If I drag it see the yellowishness is adding in the highlights I will decrease this and increase this blue slightly. Okay. So, this appears fine. Now, one thing here is you already know that if I press if you want to see this full screen press control plus F and you see the image in full screen and now if I press control D this color correction is gone again press control D to enable there is a subtle bluishness changing and if I press shift D this was the original image if I press shift D again this is the current image. So, again uh, press S, uh, control F again to reduce this bring back the original panel and also you can see this icon at the top this is nothing but shift D that is if I press on it and disable it this is all the color channels are now closed I will close this curves channel all these nodes are disabled and when I enable it all nodes are enabled. So, the next thing is say we are doing the color grading here and once you have done the grading say you want to apply the same grade to multiple clips there are thousands of clips you do grading to one clip and you want to apply it to multiple clips then you have to save your grade. How are we going to save this? We are going to save this using the gallery. Now, we have created two effects the first clip we created a grade the second clip we have created a grade and now let us save this. So, to save this now enable gallery here the gallery opens now first I will select the first clip here and selecting the first clip I will come here right click and I am going to choose the option grab still and when I click on grab still a still image is grabbed here and you can see here and I can click below here and I can also give it a name I am going to give it a name as cyan look 
this is slightly cyan. So, this is a cyan look I have added this gray. Then I will select the second clip and I am going to right click and choose grab still and I am going to name this as cross process. So, in the event of color grading when you are doing color grading for a cinema or a TV serial we have hundreds and hundreds of grades that we create like this to use it in different scenarios. So, when you are creating these grades to organize these grades just like you organize files in your computer using folders we are going to organize this with all bumps. We are going to organize all this using what we call as the gallery albums. Now, for this you have a small icon here. I will click on this icon and you can see already I have a default album in which I have stored these two clips. I can click this stills click and I can rename this as I am going to give it the name as uh, Satvik looks or you can give your name enter your name and looks. So, you have created an album and if you want to create your own album new album you can right click here and choose add still album it is going to create a new album or I can right click this see remove current album I can even remove it delete it it has been deleted and in Satvik looks I have all this color graded images. Okay. So, in this session we graded our second clip using curves. We learned how to use the curves and also we explored the cross process color grading. And our, in our next session we are going to color grade our next clips and here we are going to use a new concept which is called as color matching. Let us discuss about this color matching in our next session. Thank you.